So in this video I'm giving you a little bit of an overview as to how I work with pastel matte, how I get rid of the grain and how I use light over dark to aid smoothness and blending. Pastel matte is one of my all-time favourite surfaces and um, yeah I think this technique works really really well see that it all just starts to soften out you're gonna it's gonna go this sort of palish bluey color um, that's inevitable you've got the white going in over the over the um, the dark indigo so it is definitely going to go that sort of palish blue but it's fine because we can counteract that with well we're going to put more dark in over the top of that and we can also counteract it with you know uh, different colors in there reds and pinks and, and stuff like that and black of course so nice and gently following the direction of the fur. This is a really, really good, easy way of getting softness on pastel mat really quickly. Um, people just get really, really, uh, I, I think they get really frustrated with pastel mat, I have to say. I think they get really frustrated with pastel mat. I think the, the um, well, the problem with, with anything that kind of frustrates us is that half of the time we don't really know the um, the correct ways of using them. You know, you, you can get frustrated with anything if you don't really understand the surface and how to get the best out of it. It's the same with me and hot press paper. I, I get there. You know, I can't say I overly enjoy the process because it doesn't really fit with how my techniques you know work um but you you have to sort of ch you have to change up your um your kind of your thinking and and, and everything like that when you use different surfaces and, and pastel mat is definitely a surface that where you just need to kind of change what you um you kind of think about how how your layering and everything works um and um and what i find is getting a few layers in so i think i've got f four very very gentle layers in here there's a blue layer um uh, a black a bit of black in there then blue again so maybe three layers um and now we're putting the white in over the top and the white is purely just to sort of smooth and blend everything that's already there and what it'll also do is it'll give it a really really nice base so that then when we come to bring the darker layers in the layers that are going to really really look lovely and rich like the rest of the dog um, you're going to be able to get that darkness in and the detail in there as well. Um, and this is, you know, this is a, um, a a technique that I've been sort of using for, you know, a, a long time. I think many, well, the majority of um, artists who, who successfully use pastel mat and who really use, love pastel mat, I think probably utilise this technique quite a lot, getting this light over the dark. For me, using the white Pablo um, is... Um, I tend to use either the polychromos cold grey or the or the polychromos warm grey too an awful lot for sort of smoothing and blending. Just recently I've started using the Pablo, the white Pablo, and it's really, really, really um been a been it's worked really, really well. Particularly for black dogs. So you can see how everything's just getting that little bit softer, that little bit smoother in there. And it just works beautifully. It works really, really nicely. And and pastel mat can be, you know, you hear all of the time, oh, it, it eats your pencils. Oh, it's really grainy. Oh, you can't get sharp details. Um, and this is kind of, it's it's, it's more, almost more like hearsay. And, and what happens is, you know, artists who are maybe used to using hot press paper, then start to use pastel mat. They then use exactly the same techniques they've used on hot press paper. So i.e. keeping a sharp pencil the majority of the time, um, you know, burnishing between layers using a little bit harder pressure. And of course, what happens is, you, I mean, if you try and keep a really sharp pencil all of the time on pastel mat, you're gonna end up with a pencil this big. And you do that with hot press paper. You know, every time you sharpen your pencil, it gets shorter. So just don't sharpen it on pastel mat you know when obviously you're going to need a sharp pencil for things like eyes and details and stuff but this kind of thing you don't need sharp pencil at all in fact the blunter the pencil the better and this is why people then have this sort of skewed um idea of how pastel mat works that you can't get um you can't get um you know uh, a tiny details in there uh you know you, you're, you're you're just going to go through all of your pencils really quickly um and it's going to be really really grainy and it's not the case um you know so for me doing it this way getting it 
kind of getting your you know your values and everything in um and then using light colors to just really really blend and smooth everything and give a lovely base works brilliantly works really really well now i'm not going to come down into this area here too much what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to bring these really dark areas into here now and i'm going to use the um, ivory black again now i want to sharpen it so at the moment it's a little bit sort of um dull and i'm going to use i'm not going to put it in my electric sharpener because they break very easily and there's no way i'm having this breaking in my electric sharpener because i have to take it to bits so i'm going to use my little um cum magnesium um, uh, sharpener, my little handheld one. This is perfect, absolutely perfect. You've got a big fat, fat hole there and a little thin one. This one fits beautifully in the in the um, in the thin hole, even though it's a fat pencil. So I'm just going to sharpen that really quickly. Okay, so it doesn't take long. You don't you don't want a really 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 sharp 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 point because. What will happen is if you have got a really sharp point, as soon as you put it on the on the paper on the surface, it'll just ping off. Um, so I've left it so it's, it's sort of like it's still a little bit dull at the end. But um, and I'm just going to bring in now, and I'm going to use a little bit harder pressure. So this is the ivory black uh, Derwent drawing. It's really nice, soft, really really rich black. And I'm just going to bring this into here. Now I can still get a little bit of glazing over the top of here. I can still wear, wear these little dangly bits here, uh, here, sort of drifting off the bottom. I'll be able to get a little bit of colour in there. Um, you know, some sort of like a ready glow, something like that. But um, just coming in and just going for it. And I'll do this whenever, wherever there's like a really, really dark sort of patch of fur or whatever. I'm, I'm going to put a couple of layers in and that'll be fine and then I'm just going to go for it um, and I'm not going to be sitting here um, you know adding 50 million layers in um, you know to get to get basically this result at the end um, so I'm just going to come in a little bit heavier pressure and we're just going to um, get all of that dark in there and the lovely thing about pastel matte is that if I want to bring some lighter colours over the top, so if I just want to bring a little bit of shine or something like that in, um, I can then just bring a little bit of uh, uh, white in or grey in or whatever over the top and it will work really, really nicely. Okay, so I need to come probably up to about here. So just nice, it's not really hard pressure, but it's not. It's certainly not the light pressure that I normally use, but um, I'm not having to put a massive amount of pressure through the pencil to get this nice sort of depth that's coming through here. Remember not to ever use a brush to uh, <laughs> to brush your pigment off your pastel mat because you'll just, you just brush everything off it, um, <laughs> which is very disappointing when that happens. You know, the first time you, you, you know, you're used to using drafting film or something like that and you just take your brush and you're like, Shh, and you're like, oh no. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's, um, yeah. I just, I just end up blowing the pigment away. You can get the little devices and stuff like that. But again, you've got to be careful because if you, if you, um, like pressurized air or one of those little air pump things you can actually blow pigment off as well so okay so we've got this really nice dark area in here i'm going to pull a little bit into there as well i'm going to get this big size from nelly there let's get this nice and dark in there as well and if we can get these dark bits in again it kind of fills up half of the ear and we feel like we're making progress and that's then really motivational you know um color pencil is a slow medium so we need to we need to be as motivated as possible to sort of finish our pieces and, and excited as possible so when i um, when i do my pieces i like to kind of bring them to life as quickly as i can um not cutting corners or you know uh anything like that but just using methods that sort of make things look quite nice um you know quite quickly quite early on um and i'm just going to bring a little bit of this through into here as well this is going to take a little bit of time to kind of get 
um, you know, get all of these little fur elements in, but this is just kind of bringing that bit of the, the shadow through in there. And then let's just look at this head area here again. I'm just going to get that all dark in there. I can just bring a little bit, bit more pressure and then we can start to bring a little bit of the um, that round there as well. But it's it's a really, really super, super surface. It's very, very uh, flexible, you know, with the different pre uh, different types of fur and everything that you want to draw on it. You can get beautiful smoothness. You can get gorgeous uh, texture. Um, and of course, you've got that lovely ability to be able to get the light over dark as well, which is uh, like a, it's like a, you know, the, the holy grail really of colour pencil work is being able to get that that light over dark and it and it really is possible. Um, so I'll just bring a little bit of um, I'll bring a little bit of a highlight into into here so you can sort of see uh, how that would work. I'm just going to sharpen my white. Um, so we say if I wanted to just bring like a little bit of detail into here, can you see how beautifully that just comes in? And you can really, really work this. I mean, you know, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work in there and get it to be nice and soft. But you can really see the benefit of getting your darks in and then just working your lighter colours in over the top so you can bring these beautiful details out. Um, OK, so I'm just going to bring a little bit more down here. Um, this is the board I'm working on as well, the pastel map board. So it's... Um, it's it's smoother i i find it smoother and more consistent in quality um you know than the um, than the sheets um but even so you still get quite a lot of grain through there and that is a good thing the grain on the pastel mat is a good thing it means that you've got the ability to get lots of layers in there um but that doesn't that doesn't mean that you have to get lots of layers in there um and the beauty of pastel mat is that if you use your pencils in a certain way so how I use my pencil softening, using the light over the dark, using things like this, the, the ivory, the uh, Derwent drawing. Um, it means that we can actually get away with fewer layers, which is always, you know, it's always great because it makes things a little bit speedier. And, um, you know, not that time is ever really something that I'm worried about, um, you know, and, and usually I think the time element with colour pencil, um, it's usually an issue because, uh, it, you know, people um, sell in their, their portraits. Um, and of course, if it takes an awful long time to draw one and then, you know, you're not charging a huge amount, then that sort of um, sort of time to cost ratio is is pretty um, high. So, uh, you know, in that respect, really what we all should be doing is raising prices. But I guess that's a that's a different conversation to be having, um, you know, and it's uh, that that's how you're going to get away from, oh, gosh, it's taking me ages to draw to, do you know what? It takes as long as it takes and uh, and, and that's it, um, you know, and, and getting to that point is a really, really nice place to be because then you're not sort of rushing. You're not worrying about everything. It's, it is what it is. So my pieces normally take me around sort of three to four days, um, probably about five hours. So anywhere between sort of 15 and, and 20 hours, I guess, um, for a piece like this. And it's not a massive piece. Uh, a big piece is going to cost me, uh, is going to take me obviously an awful lot longer. Um, you know, it can take me double, double the amount of time if it's a really big piece. I've got a big piece coming after this one. Um, so, um, you know, but that's sort of four four evenings work if you like sometimes it takes a little bit longer just because i maybe don't have spend as much time um you know drawing as uh, as i as i'd like but um yeah so i'm just in here again we're just kind of bringing in those little sort of um text textury bits where we've almost got like a it's almost it's like this over here we've got that little ripple effect in here and that's what we're kind of bringing into here as well um and all it is is just sort of patches of black and then working around it and then you get this really nice effect and it looks like you spent ages on it and um and you haven't <laughs> that's always good isn't it it's always about the illusion isn't it the illusion that i've spent absolutely ages on something and i haven't um 
again need to kind of watch the uh, um, the fur direction we've got a little bit of a, a sort of a curl going on here as well which is quite nice um, and there's an there's an awful lot of blue that needs to go in here but actually this this ivory black's doing a really really good job of um, just getting all of those lovely dark elements in there a little bit into there not too much because it's not not sort of black black but um yeah so pastel matte is a it, it is is a super super surface it's so um uh, you know flexible and everything and um and i never i never sort of erase anything on on pastel matte so if i kind of go wrong i just incorporate it in just by adding extra layers and it just yeah it works really well um, so, you know, if you want to use pastel matte, just don't sharpen your pencils too often, um, you know, and use light over dark to get that nice sort of softness in there, uh, which works so beautifully. <laughs> 